Sun and Laracy distinguish between other types of crises and reputational crises by first pointing out that just because a crisis may affect an organization's reputation, it does not mean that the crisis itself is reputational. Instead, they argue that reputational crises are events that focus specifically on a threat to stakeholder perceptions and collective estimates of the qualities of an organization. As such, reputational crises are typically viewed as having low severity. While the relationship risk is real, the risks are unlikely to be life-changing. In fact, Son and Lyricy identify three conditions that have to be met for a crisis to be considered a reputational one. First, reputational crises differ from reputational problems because there are specific events that trigger the crisis. These triggers can be the direct result of an interaction between the organization, either in person or online, and any stakeholder group like employees, consumers, members of a brand community, or critics. They can also be the result of advocacy or claims made against the organization that have not yet been substantiated. Second, the threat to the organization has to be credible to distinguish the reputational crisis from a reputational problem. Organizations can have bad reputations and still be very successful. Crises, by definition, represent a threat to some aspect of the organization's viability in its present state. Finally, by emphasizing the collective nature of an organization's reputation, it suggests that whatever the reputational crisis is, it affects a more global evaluation of the worth, appropriateness, or value of the organization to one or more stakeholder. These characteristics also suggest that reputational crises may not be universally viewed as crises. They can be specific to different groups. What one stakeholder group finds as a red line may not affect the perception of the organization by other stakeholder groups. This is why the lessons we learned about crises with events, asking who is in crisis, is an important part of understanding crises in general. So let's take a look at some of the most common types of reputational crisis. Coombs and Holiday point out in a social media age that organizations are seeing more and more minor crises emerge, ones based on complaints, gaffes, and sometimes even unforeseen reactions to a campaign. They point out that there is little likely lasting harm to the organization, however, action still has to be taken. This is what they call a paracrisis, a potentially high frequency, low impact crisis that can range from the complaint to a social media gaffe. There are lots of examples. However, probably one of my favorites is a campaign from Walker's Crisps in the UK. Now everyone outside the UK will know Walker's as the potato chip brand Lay's. Walker's was doing a British based promotion with Gary Lineker. He's a famous English football player and also the primary spokesman for the Crisp company here in the UK. They're promoting the Champions League and ask people to create their own selfie by uploading their picture to be superimposed on the one that Lineker was holding and then tweet them. Now, it didn't exactly go as planned because the very naughty British public uploaded a lot of really dodgy people's images from pedophiles to serial killers and dictators. Not surprisingly, walkers didn't want the Twitter sphere filled with pictures like these. Now, was there any lasting reputational harm to walkers or risk of that? No, but the situation did require action, it required a follow-up, and it meant that the company was going to get made fun of across pretty much every news outlet in the UK for a day or two. This is exactly what's meant by the paracrisis. But if the situation weren't handled well, it could have had a meaningful reputational impact, both in terms of the images themselves, along with the, how the company handled it. But with their quick and appropriate action, it was dealt with pretty effectively. Another major kind of reputational crisis is the direct challenge. This can take many forms, these crises focus on particular complaints that gain some kind of traction online or in legacy media outlets. These can stem from perceived misdeeds, criticisms, represent consumer advocacy, or even counter branding. Some of these we'll talk about later in more detail, but in a social media environment, organizations are getting increasingly used to managing complaints. 
in chatting with folks from industry, the general sense is that for every piece of positive feedback about a company, they're likely to get about 20 complaints. For the most part, these complaints don't escalate to crises, but when they do, they create some interesting challenges for the organizations. I think one of the most notable cases of this was Bayer Aspirin's Little Pains campaign released in the US a few years back. I thought the campaign was cute. The company's slogan at the time was for all of life's little pains. The company was trying to target parents with back pain, and that's nothing new. A lot of their previous campaigns had used imagery of parents picking up kids and having back pain. This campaign, though, focused on that and especially moms with a double entendre for all of life's little pains. Now, this didn't sit well with one mom's network in the U.S. who sent a joint letter signed by about 900 women taking issue with suggesting that their children were pains. Bear's immediate response was to send a personalized letter from the CEO to each of the signatories and pull the campaign. These consumer advocates then used their same social media voice to praise Bayer for their actions. It ended up in a win for the company and suggests that potentially hostile stakeholders can actually be shifted into allies with the right response. Over time, there will be products and services that fall out of favor because of differing populations and changing political attitudes. For example, plastic straws are viewed as an environmental risk now because they often end up in our oceans, and so a lot of companies have shifted away from them as a result. The point is that times change, and that can create risk and pressures for organizations to act or change their policy. Sometimes these attitudes are brought forth with reputational challenges like we talked about in the last example, but sometimes organizations react to changing pressures and a belief that acting alleviates current or potential criticisms and that itself can trigger the reputational crisis. For example, in 2018, Dick Sporting Goods, a US-based sports goods retailer, announced that it would trial a reduction in the sale of guns and ammunition in response to the ongoing problems with mass shootings in the US. They couched this statement as a direct response to what they saw as something counter to their values and desires for society to move forward. In early 2019, they announced that after the success of their trial, they were going to remove guns from 125 stores across the US. Guns rights advocates weren't thrilled and actually argued that the company had shot itself in the foot and that the only reason they were doing that because their profits were falling. Dick's response was that actually in stores where it was trialed, the store saw profits increase and what they had been seeing was that sales of guns and ammunition were falling anyhow, so they made the decision because of these social changes. The reputational threat for a company like Dick's comes not only from the decision to change policy, especially in the midst of a highly politicized environment, but also in anticipating how different stakeholders will react. We have seen similar conversations in other places. For example, the bank RBS in the UK announced that if Scotland ever voted for independence, it would leave. They issued this threat during 2014, and then it seemed like a persuasive threat, and people were worried about that. However, in 2019, as the independence conversation grew again because of Brexit, RBS renewed their threat, but their reaction this time was somewhat different. People started to react negatively towards RBS instead of towards the notion of Scottish independence. So organizations can sometimes enter into their own politicized environments out of choice, or out of necessity, but in either way, it can create a cre credible reputational threat. Thank you.